Hey guys, this is Sidesh from Sid's Art and I'm back with another video on Inkscape Isometry series and I'm so sorry for the delay. I was very busy with the exams and I couldn't get any time for making anything. So now I'm back and let's continue with the series. If you're new to the isometry, then I will recommend checking out the first video of this series in which I have explained basics of isometry and why it is so simple. Also, feel free to check out the other Inkscape videos on my channel. There are so many of them. In this video, we will go through the most commonly used technique used by Inkscape users to make isometric drawings. If you go on YouTube and search for isometric drawings using Inkscape, I guarantee you that almost all of them use axonometric grids for making these illustrations. So let's go and see what it is and how to use it. So without any further ado, let's get started with the axonometric grids. Here I have Inkscape 0.92 on Windows. Even if you have anything else, just don't worry. It's uh, I don't think it matters much in the exonometric. So let's just go to file and click document properties. This will open up the window. By the way, you can do the same thing by pressing Ctrl Shift and D. Same thing. Anyways, so next you can go to the grids tab and select exonometric grid and click new. And you can see I have exonometric grids on my screen. So here you, you will see two types of grids. One is major, uh, minor and another one is major. So let's just give this major tab a red color. Now still you can only see the red lines because I have zoomed out a lot. So let's just zoom in and you can see the blue lines. These are the ma minor grids. So what you have to keep in mind is that in your isometric axis, the minor grid is the smallest unit you can have in any axis direction. So let's change the unit to pixels. Now what it means is that every minor grid on my screen is 3.7 pixels. So let's just change it to 10. Now you can see the size of a minor grid has increased. And another three, another important property is how many minor grids you want between inside a major grid. So here, what it means is like how many blue lines you want between two red lines. So, so let's set it to 10. You can see there are 10 blue lines between two red lines. So nothing fancy. Let's change it back to five. So now what you have to keep in mind is that if I zoom out again, I can see the major grids, but Whenever you're drawing something and if uh, if the calculation, I mean the size of the drawing matters to you, then what you have to keep in mind is how much or uh, what is the size of the minor grid and how many minor grids you have in a major grid. So in this case, I have five minor grids of size 10 pixels. So if you do the basic math, this distance bit, uh, this distance should be 50 centimeters. Alright, so the simplest thing you can make on the exonometric grids is a cube. So for that, we will use the pen tool or also called as Bezier tool. So in order to use it effectively, I would recommend you should turn on the snap nodes. So it will snap the Bezier tool to the grid intersection. Then all you have to do is just make lines on each axis. So this is my top plane. This is my left plane and I can make the right plane just by duplicating this one by pressing Ctrl D and making it a mirror uh, and mirroring it or flipping it horizontally. Now in order to snap this to the corners, I would turn on the snap cusp nodes and you can see our simple cube is ready. Now let me ask you what's the size of this cube based on the properties we had set so you can pause the video if you want yeah. so yeah the answer is 200 pixels and that's because from this into this we can see that every major grid is 50 pixel wide and we have four major grids on each side so this cube is 200 by 200 by 200 pixels wide so yeah that's kit stuff nothing fancy about it so what you have to keep in mind is that 
every time you are drawing something ask yourself this question what part of the object is visible in which plane so what i mean is if you're making any object what's visible in top plane what's visible in left plane and what's visible in right plane <clears throat> all right so let's consider an example of a rectangle with these dimensions and this these are in pixels so let's first see the top plane uh, the top rectangle or top plane whatever you call it it's 400 pixels wide and it has 200 pixels height so let me select the pen tool and if you you know if you remember then our every major grid is 50 pixel wide so i will make four grids and in this direction i'll have eight grids and then i'll just connect it right now let's make the right plane so it's again 400 whites and 200 pixels is its height so same width and four blocks down and this is my right plane same way i would draw the left plane is this 200 by 200 so my square will be four by four And yeah, that's it. Like this is how you're gonna make all kind of rectangular or square kind of drawings using exonometric grid. So all you have to keep in mind is to break down the figure in three planes and take care of the pixels and whatever units you're using. And after that, everything is just snapping and it's so easy to draw. So one more thing is if you are done with the grids, all you can do is just press Ctrl Shift T and open this window and just remove them but keep in mind that once you remove a grid and then try to get it back your settings will be lost so in this case you can just press ctrl z and get them back so yep this one is also kit stuff no big deal all right so before i wrap up this video here is a challenge for you this is a front view of a bookcase and all you have to do is make it at isometric and the dimensions are given on the screen by the way this rectangle black rectangle is just the hollow space now in this case you have to use your imagination of like uh like how to make it because i'm not giving you the top plane and uh, right plane because you know common sense it's just gonna be your plane rectangles so the dimensions are it's 300 pixels wide and height is 200 also this is the drawer handle width is 100 pixel and height is 20 pixels also these are the legs and 40 by 40 and also you have to keep a uh, adding of 20 pixels this thing is 20 20 20 so yeah these are the colors you can use i mean you can use your own colors but if you want to use these colors i will leave them I, I will leave the color code in the description and also the final result should look something like this so i will post the answer in the next video about how to do this so until then try it and see how you go so enjoy and see you in the next videos bye bye